And let's start with the number one seeds in the four regions. All right, in the east, no surprise there, North Carolina, the top seed. The last time they were number one, they went all the way to the championship game and won it in 82. In the Midwest, it's Indiana, masterful job by Bobby Knight and company. Rick Pitino's Kentucky Wildcats, the number one seed in the southeast. And Michigan, playing arguably the toughest schedule in the country. They are number one in the west. Okay, let's take a look in the east first. These are Thursday, Saturday games in Winston-Salem. Number one ranked North Carolina, as we mentioned, they will be taking on the 16th seed there, East Carolina. The Pirates, first team since Montana State in 86 to come into the tournament with a losing record. The eighth seed, Rhode Island. Congratulations to Al Skinner, first appearance since 88. They will take on Purdue and their sensational sophomore, Glenn Robinson. Brian Mahoney, sensational job at St. John's fifth seed. He's the Big East coach of the year. St. John's will meet Texas Tech. James Dickey, the head coach there, second year coach, magnificent job. Arkansas will hold down the fourth seed in the East, and the Razorbacks of Nolan Richardson will take on Holy Cross. George Blaney in his 21st season at his alma mater. Now, these games are Friday, Sunday games in Syracuse in the East. The number six seed, Virginia. Jeff Jones, well, I tell you, they started off 11 and 0, finished 8 and 9, but they're in the big dance. They will be taking on Manhattan, the Jaspers' first appearance since 1958, the same year the head coach Fran Fraschello was born. Happy birthday. Number three seed goes to Massachusetts. John Calipari went back to his old coaching style. They're in the NCAAs, taking on the team from the Ivy League's 14th seeded Pennsylvania undefeated in Ivy League play. The number seven seed, New Mexico State, Swift, Sam Crawford, the man there, as they will play Nebraska, the number 10 seed. All right, the number two seed, Cincinnati, synonymous with defense there. Number 15, Coppin State. Bang Mitchell, the head coach there, they were undefeated in MEAC play. Now to the Midwest. These are Thursday, Saturday games in Chicago. The number six seed, the California Golden Bears, under interim coach Todd Bozeman, went 9-1 since the firing of Lou Campanelli. They will play the LSU Fighting Tigers. Dale Brown's team did it on the strength of postseason play. The Duke Blue Devils hold down a number three seed in the Midwest. Mike Krzyzewski's team will take on the 14th seed, Southern Illinois. First appearance since 1970. The BYU Cougars hold down the number seven seed. They will play 10th seed at SMU. John Shoemate, remarkable turnaround job for the Mustangs. Number two seed, the Kansas Jayhawks stumbled a bit in postseason play, but Roy Williams' team is in, and the Kansas Jayhawks will play Ball State, the Cardinals' third appearance in the last five years. And Friday, Sunday location in Indianapolis, of course, the number one ranked Indiana Hoosiers, Bob Knight's team, maybe without Allen Henderson, will take on the 16th seed Wright State just their sixth season in Division I play. They won the Division II championship back in 83. Number eight seed New Orleans, the privateers have a senior by the name of Irvin Johnson. Don't call him magic, but he can play. The number nine seed Xavier of Ohio out of the MCC, seventh appearance in the last eight years for Pete Gillen. The number five seed is Oklahoma State, coached by the master Eddie Sutton. They are in the tournament. We'll take on Marquette, Kevin O'Neill, super job there, first appearance since 1983. Denny Crum, the old hand, back in the tournament against 17 appearances and two national championships, and the Cardinals will take on Delaware Fighting Blue Hens, second consecutive appearance for the Delaware Blue Hens. All right, now that's half the field, 32 teams, 32 more to go, and we'll bring you up today with the Southeast and the West for the 64-team field right after these messages. City James Brown with you. I know you have pencil and paper in hand, so let's get right to it. The rest of the field for this year's NCAA NCAA tournament. All right, the number six seed. These are Thursday, Saturday games in Orlando. The six seed, Kansas State, uh, had a strong postseason appearance here. Fifth time in the tournament in the last seven years. They will take on Perry Clark's two-lane green wave. Stumbled down the stretch, but they're in nonetheless. The number three seed, Florida State Seminoles, led by the trio of Sam Cassell, Charlie Ward, and Bob Sur, will host the 14th seed. Evansville Aces, Jim Cruz, a Bob Knight disciple there. The seventh seed, Western Kentucky, Ralph Willard has the Hilltoppers in. They were the Sunbelt Conference Tournament champions, and they will play the tenth seed at Memphis State Tigers, led by do-everything player Anthony Penny Hardaway. 
The number two seed, Seton Hall, on a roll coming into the tournament, won their last 11 games, including the Big East Championship today. They will play the 15th seed, Tennessee State Tigers. Hats off to Frankie Allen, his second year there, took a team that was 4-24 and 24 last year. They're 19-9. and nine. All right, these games are Friday, Sunday in Nashville, the other half of the Southeast. Number one ranked Kentucky, the number one seed there, that is. They will take the 16th seed, Ryder Bronx, making their first appearance since 1984. Utah holds down the eighth seed. Rick Majerus, the big man, doing a big job there. The ninth seed, Pittsburgh Pirates, are in the tournament strong schedule from the Big East. The fifth seed, Wake Forest, the Demon Deacons, led by All-American forward Rodney Rogers, will play the 12th seed at Tennessee, Chattanooga Moccasins. Mac McCarthy, the coach there, first appearance since 1988. The fourth seed, the Iowa Hawkeyes, who have overcome all kinds of adversity this year. Tom Davis has his team in there for the eighth time in the last nine years will take on Northeast Louisiana. All right, now let's move on to Salt Lake City. These are Thursday, Saturday games in the West region. Finally, the sixth seed, the Fighting Illini of Illinois, Lou Henson, 10th appearance for a Lou's do there. The 11th seed, Long Beach State, strong postseason play, quality wins over then number one ranked Kansas back in Lawrence, Kansas, showed everyone they are for will. The third seed, the Vanderbilt Commodores. Eddie Fogler has Billy McCaffrey playing for him, and they're doing an outstanding job. The 14th seed, they will play Boise State, the Broncos, out of the big sky. The seventh seed, Temple Owls. Now, a lot of argument as to whether or not Temple or Michigan had the tougher schedule. You take your pick. John Chaney's team is in. They will play the 10th seed of Missouri Tigers. What a weekend here in Kansas City for Norm Stewart. They knocked off Oklahoma State, Iowa State, and Kansas State to win the Big 8 tournament. All right, the number two seed, Arizona, is there in Salt Lake City. Ninth consecutive year that Arizona has received the bid. They will play the 15th seed, Santa Clara Broncos. All right, Friday, Sunday games in Tucson. Number one ranked Michigan, the number one seed there, that is. They will be playing the 16th seed, Coastal Carolina, led by Tony Slam Duncan, a four-time Big South Player of the Year. The eighth seed, Iowa State, the senior statesman, Johnny Orr, showing he can still coach, taking on the ninth seed, UCLA Bruins. Jim Herrick just received a three-year contract on Tuesday. Congratulations, you're in the tournament. New Mexico State has the fifth seed. Dave Bliss's squad will take on a team that is certainly cheering down in the foggy bottom in Washington, D.C. George Washington in for the first time in 32 years. The fourth seed goes to Georgia Tech. I tell you, they won the ACC postseason tournament over North Carolina, and Georgia Tech will play the winner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference Championship right now being played between Jackson State and Southern. All right, now you may be asking, what about teams that had their bubbles burst? UNLV, a major one out, as well as Providence, Houston, Pepperdine, Oklahoma, and Minnesota. And, of course, the teams that are out of the tournament this year certainly will engender an awful lot of conversation. We'll do that with Tom Butters, the uh, chair of the Men's Basketball Selection Committee. But right now, let's take you back to where they certainly will be talking in New York with Jim Nance. You better believe it, J.V. I can see a lot of people out there with writers cramped mm -hmm. furiously trying to fill in the brackets. We'll be going through them once again a little bit later here in the show. But one more time, I'll look at the number one seeds now for the 1993 tournament. North Carolina in the east, Indiana in the Midwest, Kentucky southeast, Michigan in the west. We stack them that way because at the final four, here's the matchup. Here will be the brackets in New Orleans, southeast against the west, and uh, the east Midwest champions will meet in New Orleans on April the 3rd. Now, what about conference breakdowns? Six from the ACC, six from the Big Eight, five from the Big Ten, and uh, and Bill Rafter, how about that uh, five from the Big Ten? People thought maybe more, huh? Seven. Some people were talking. Clem Haskins must have thrown the pen when he was doing his graphic. That's a team that has to be disappointed. How about you, Billy? What do you think? Well, I think the thing that's interesting to me is that uh, the Atlantic Ten with four, Big East with three, it looks like a little change of power right there. The team that really has to be disappointed from the Big East is Providence, mm. huh? On a roll late in the season, it looks like those postseason tournaments really came back to haunt them a little here. Providence got the third choice out of the Big East, uh, or did not get the third choice. Pitt got it instead. And a big win over Arizona too early in the year. And a good finish. So tough for Rick Barnes and company. All right, gentlemen. When we come back, we're going to hear from the chair of the selection committee out in Kansas City, Tom Butters, later on the brackets one more time as we continue on the road to New Orleans here on CBS. <laughs> Trying to figure out some of the matches down the line. Knight and, Sh and Krzyzewski in the mm -hmm. same bracket in the Midwest. Now for the questions back out to Kansas City we go. James Brown, take it, please. 
All right, Jimmy, thank you very much. And apparently I was moving a little faster here than I ever did on the basketball floor. I mentioned that uh, George Washington would be playing New Mexico State, and indeed it is New Mexico that George Washington will be playing in Tucson. And right now let's talk with Tom Butters, the chair of the Men's Basketball Selection Committee. Did you ever move that fast on the court? <laughs> Never that fast. You did a great job. You know, you talked about um, how difficult things were day one for you guys, and uh, actually you started to see the light yesterday. Now teams like UNLV, not in there. Providence uh, came down the stretch strong not in there. What was the decision as far as those squads were concerned? Well, hard choices. There's no doubt about it. We labored long and hard. I don't think I've ever seen a committee spend so much time on teams that ended up not getting in the, in the tournament. But the when you come down to a, a league like the Big West where you had um, the champion, New Mexico State, you had a team, Long Beach, that had beaten UNLV twice. They're playing for the championship. It's simply a case of two slots, three teams. Long Beach having a chance to play their way in, so they made that decision for us, really. Okay, and I'm sure the fellows back in New York have a, quite a few questions for you as well. Let's go back to Jim Nance and the group in New York. All right, JB. Uh, Tom, I'm curious. You look at the brackets, the seedings, the at-large selections with the lowest seeds, George Washington and Marquette are each 12 seeds. Is it fair to say they were the last two teams to get into the tournament? They were among the last teams, <clears throat> uh, Pat, there's no doubt about that. And what was the final decision to, to give it to George Washington and Marquette over, say, UNLV, Providence, Minnesota? Well, you've, you've got a cluster of teams, all of which look very similar. We had put all of those teams through, as you know, what we call the nitty-gritty, and it came out in their favor. Tom, Billy Packer, uh, I, obviously the you fellows have been really drained. I haven't seen you this quite tired in, in, in some time. One of the things that uh, I have to wonder about are postseason conference tournaments because obviously they weighted heavily on this committee's decision. You look on not only teams that got in and those that, that, that uh, were left out, but also seedings. Clubs like LSU that went from bubble to fairly high. Georgia Tech with their great move in the ACC. Temple. And then those out. Duke going down somewhat. A Vegas out completely and a Providence out completely. How much of these postseason tournaments weigh on this decision process the last, let's say, 18 to 20 hours? Well, obviously they count. I said in a press conference last week that, uh, that season-ending games and season-ending tournaments obviously count, and they should. But we had an extenuating circumstance, it seems, this year, because not only was a team winning or losing, there were other teams winning and losing at the same time, and we had what appeared at least to be an inordinate a number of surprising losses. I haven't counted those up, but certainly it exacerbated the, the problem. Tom, Bill Raftery, I'm just curious. I know Arizona has to be a little disappointed. How did you arrive at that decision not to see them as a one? Well, again, uh, you have to measure what they've done as opposed to what Michigan had done. Strength of schedule. Uh, when, when you look at Michigan, it, they played one of the most difficult schedules, I thought, in the country and did well with it. And we certainly would have liked to have had five ones, but the point of the matter was we couldn't do that, and, and we simply came down with, uh, with Michigan winning out. Tom, Jim Nance again. There was some discussion that maybe North Carolina would get the one seed in the southeast since the regional is in Charlotte. Instead, they're going to the east, the regional at the Meadowlands. Was that ever discussed by the committee? I've talked about it, oh, I guess two weeks ago, um, briefly with uh, some of the staff. But we can't change it uh, in midstream, it seems to me. It's always been an e-school, and if we changed it this year, then we'd have to fashion it next year uh, or the year after if the same teams were involved with cities that are different. So it seemed to us like it was best to leave it where it was. I'm sorry that's the way it is, but, uh, but uh, we'd, it is the way it is. All right, Tom Butters, thank you very much. Best of luck to you in the committee. And uh, James Brown, we thank you also out there in Kansas City. The decisions have been made. We'll go one more time through the brackets when we come back on the road to the Final Four on CBS.